Pay-Per-View is proud to present Mike Tyson's first world championship fight in over six years when he challenges England's popular WBC heavyweight champion, Frank Bruno. In their first meeting in 1989, Tyson, then the undisputed world heavyweight champion, successfully retained his title with a fifth-round TKO. Bruno has waited seven long years for his revenge, so you can see this great rematch live on Pay-Per-View on Saturday, March 16th at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Leave the old adage that you get what you pay for. You now understand why Saturday's fight between Mike Tyson and Buster Mathis was free. The three-round fight that was roughly as entertaining as Tyson's last fight against Peter McNeely, only without the stunning witticisms from the opponent, was apparently Tyson's last fight for nothing. The former champ will now take on Frank Bruno for the WBC heavyweight title on March 16th, and that will not be free. We'll find out March 16th how rusty I am. Fight, this is going to be great. I look so dearly forward to it. <laughs> I can't wait for the fight. I'm getting involved and I'm getting stereo from this, that, and this man over there shouting about this. But I can't wait for the fight. I wish the fight was tomorrow. But I don't want to get I do too. <laughs> we'll take it as it comes. I'm just looking forward to it. He's talking about he wish it was today or yesterday. Boy, don't he know. <laughs> Three months of that still to come. If you're thinking about forking over the dough for that fight, consider their last get-together. Tyson dropped 40 pounds three weeks before the fight and still dumped Bruno in the first half minute of the bout. It was over in the fifth, and Tyson won every round on every judge's card. Happy shopping. Hi, uh, to my right, the former heavyweight champ of the world, fellow by the name of Mike Tyson, who's in training for Frank Bruno for the WBC heavyweight championship on March 16th here in uh, Las Vegas. How are you feeling physically right now? Um, absolutely great. Yeah. How yeah. about the hand? I know that was a question, obviously. It had to postpone the first fight with Buster. Uh, how about uh, right now? Everything 100%? Everything's going well. I'm just looking forward to March 16th. You've had less than four rounds of preparation in your two fights to get ready for this championship. Is that enough for you? Well, it, it's irrelevant at this particular point. I'm here and I'm prepared. He's here to defend his title. I'm here to take it. And I'm going to have it. Mike, uh, given the quality of opponents that you've had in your comeback, the first two, how do you measure your progress right now? Well, the first fight was basically just um, a feeling out pro progress as far as um, getting back into the ring and getting more acquainted with the atmosphere of the fight game. And the second fight was, as you know, to a higher caliber. And I'm just confident I'm going to do well this fight on March 16th. If you get by Frank Bruno, on March 16th. When I get by Frank Bruno. Okay, yeah. when you get by... He, he can be intimidating. Uh, assuming you get by Frank Bruno on March 16th, what's next for you? Would you like to go for the WBA title and Bruce Seldon or the IBF well, and both? Well, you know I mean? I take this one fight at a time. This particular moment, I'm, I'm, my focus is on Frank Bruno. And as I said before, I, I refuse to be beaten. I, you know, I just, I have to have this belt. Did he hurt you in the, in the first fight to back in 1989? Well... If he hurt me, I'm sure I hurt him more than he hurt me because I, I came out victorious. What about the fact that Mr. Bruno is out for revenge? Well, that's good. That's good. I'm just, um, all praise be to God, I'm just happy that I'm having the opportunity to fight him for the title, and I look forward to doing well, and I'll come to be victorious. On March 16th. All right, Mike, we really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for stopping by. We say goodbye to Mike Tyson. Tyson speaks. I must beat him. I have to beat him. I have no other choice but to beat him. We'll hear more on Tyson Bruno. March 16th, Las Vegas, Nevada, WBC Heavyweight Championship. It is Mike Tyson looking to take the title from Frank Bruno. Tyson hasn't been champ since going to prison in 1992. And in his third fight since coming back, he says he will win the belt from Bruno. Yeah, I used to see him laughing with me. I'll be in just tremendous shape. I'll be in tremendous focus, and I'm going to just be throwing punches with bad intentions. The championship is the main asset. You know, I mean, just to be the champion, to be called the champ. How about that quote? I'll be throwing punches with bad intentions. Meantime, the next fight Lennox Lewis has could be in court. Lewis has filed a suit claiming he was next in line for a shot at Bruno after winning a title elimination bout. A federal court ruling Thursday backed Lewis's claim and wants the WBC to show why Tyson Bruno should be the matchup when the governing body itself had previously set up the other plan to see who would get the first shot. 
Welcome back to the show. We're talking with Jim Lampley. For those of you who are expecting to see Andre rise in transportation problems, he'll be with us next week. You know, we tried to get... I'll, I'll be happy to play in the role of Andre and answer a few questions about this past year in Cleveland and what's coming up next. Yeah, we'll talk football in a moment. We tried to get Bert Sugar for the show, but he's having his hat fixed on the East Coast, so he, so he couldn't make it. All right, the Bruno Tyson fight. Is there anything that wows you about this one? Well, I, I think it's interesting the number of people in the sport who suggest that Bruno might have a chance to do something. Um, some of that is probably wishful thinking on the part of people who are politically aligned on the opposite side of the Tyson dividing line in the sport. Uh, most of us seem to suspect that Bruno's chin is his Achilles heel, so to speak, in this fight as in most others. But Mike hasn't done anything tremendously impressive since leaving prison. I mean, his performance against Mathis was technically raw. It showed ring rust in a way that I'm sure he would be hoping would dissipate by now and uh, I still leave open to question as I always have whether this guy can wind up making anything in the way of a significant mark on the history of the sport compared to what his potential appeared to be in 1987 and 88. Did you get any sense Jim of or a gauge of his uh, mindset of where he is mentally in terms of getting back to where he once was? No, I haven't spoken to him uh, you know, I can only listen to the hearsay of people who've been around him. He was at our fight last weekend in Las Vegas, the uh, Chavez de la Hoya doubleheader. And I, I kind of tried to engage his eye across the ring, at least get a chance to look at him, you know, maybe say hello or something like that. But, uh, and we were directly across the ring from one another. But one how or another, I didn't catch his eye. But if you, had to, if you had to make a prediction, you don't think he'll be the fighter that, that he was before. You know, he can win all three heavyweight title belts without doing anything hugely significant. Right. Beating Frank Bruno, Bruce Seldon, Franz Botta, that's not going to get him into the history books. Uh, then you have a lot of people who are sort of attempting to get into position. Tommy Morrison was one of them. Uh, via a contract with King of some sort to fight with Mike. But I, I still see it as a big political and business problem whether that can happen. My, my prediction has always been that he would wind up finishing his career without ever fighting Bo, without ever fighting Moore, without ever fighting Lewis, without ever fighting Foreman, uh, you know, the four best-known heavyweights outside of Tyson in the division at this moment. I don't think he'll fight him. The fight. Something you may not believe. Three weeks from tomorrow, Mike Tyson goes after his first world heavyweight title, the WBC version against Frank Bruno, since losing to Buster Douglas more than six years ago. But Frank Bruno, even though he's a 10 to 1 underdog, remains remarkably and even uncharacteristically self-assured of beating the odds and beating up the aforementioned Mr. Tyson, as Al Bernstein reports tonight from Inside the Ropes. If Frank Bruno fights as tough as he's talking, then his March 16th battle with Mike Tyson would be exciting. Insiders close to Bruno say he's showing more bravado for this fight than anyone can believe. He's utterly confident that he'll win. And some of the remarks he's made in taped interviews are almost inflammatory, a real departure for the normally reserved Brit. I can see myself knocking out Mike Tyson, spectacularly knocking him out. There's no way he's going to beat me. No way. No way. No way. If Tyson is worried, he isn't showing it. He was courtside this week watching the UNLV running Rebels upset UC Irvine. Sitting behind the Rebels bench, Mike rooted for his fellow Brooklynite guard Sunshine Smith. Reports are his Las Vegas-based training is going very well for the Bruno bout. Mike Tyson fought Frank Bruno once before. This is what happened. Tyson gets nailed for the left hook. Tyson looks wobbly as he attacks Bruno. That's the first time I've seen anything like Tyson staggered. Mike Tyson doesn't seem to have that fiery look in his eyes. Bruno versus Tyson, WBC Heavyweight Championship, coming soon. Live on pay-per-view. The Championship, Part 1. Call your cable or satellite company. At 21, he was the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Now, Mike Tyson wants to be undisputed champion again. He wants to unify the title. He begins against newly crowned WBC champion Frank Bruno. Is Tyson ready? One thing's for sure. Bruno is Bruno versus Tyson. Heavyweight Championship. Coming soon, live on pay-per-view, The Championship, Part 1. Call your cable or satellite company. Tyson and Bruno, two weeks from Saturday, let the yapping begin. I beat him once, and I beat him before, and I'm going to beat him again. That time I rocked him, I'm going to rock him to sleep. I hope Don King's got room in his lap. From this Saturday night, Mike Tyson will fight with a title at stake for the first time in more than six years. It was February 1990 when Buster Douglas did the unthinkable, and ever since... 
Every Tyson challenger thought he could do the same, but none have. Frank Bruno will defend his WBC title against Tyson at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, where they held a press conference today to drum up some attention. There's not much I can say, but I beat him once, and I beat him before, and I'm going to beat him again. Thank you. You caught him pretty good one shot. Very, very Did well you so. realize that you maybe stunned him a bit because it was furious after that? That time I rocked him, I'm going to rock him to sleep. I hope Don King's got room in his lap. Mike Tyson is the greatest ass kicker ever lived, and that's all there is to it. Now, you can talk about anybody else you want. You can bring up all these old... Um, uh, the world loves to praise these dead people, all the dead fighters, all the Elvises and the Marilyn Monroe's. All the, we got a live ass kicker right here in 1996. They do not like each other. It is not an act. In today's ritualistic press conference promoting the Mike Tyson-Frank Bruno fight, two and a half weeks off, it was filled with bad will. Bruno raising Tyson's prison experience, saying that Tyson was worse now than before he went in, and Bruno assailing Tyson's entourage as, quote, bad people. Here with a sampling of the invective. Well, if Frank Bruno can fire as many punches as he did verbal jabs today, he may have a shot against Mike Tyson. The two meet in two and a half weeks for the WBC heavyweight title. They have a history. Tyson knocked Bruno out eight years ago. No gushy reunion today in Las Vegas as the war of words escalated. I'm in great shape. I'm looking forward to this fight. Um, there's not much I can say, but I beat him once, and I beat him before, and I'm going to beat him again. Thank you. That time I rocked him, I'm going to rock him to sleep. I hope Don King's got room in his lap. All right. So it's interesting that Mr. Bruno's talking very brave and courageous, but we'll see. Mike Tyson is the greatest ass kicker ever lived, and that's all there is to it. Now, you can talk about anybody else you want. You can bring up all these old... Um, uh, the world loves to praise these dead people, all the dead fighters, all the Elvises and the Marilyn Monroe's. All the, we got a live ass kicker right here in 1996. And that's all there is to it. Well, to that, Frank Bruno said Tyson's followers are bad people. There's not one ounce of class among them. He says after he finishes with Tyson, all those people will all disappear. Now, Bruno then aimed his assault at Tyson, saying he thought prison was supposed to make you a better man. He says Tyson is getting worse in and out of the ring. Barry. At 21, he was the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, the youngest ever. He was pure, unbridled fury, unbeatable. But that was eight long years ago. Now, Mike Tyson wants to unify the title. To be undisputed champion of the world again. His quest begins against newly crowned WBC champion Frank Bruno. Is Tyson ready? Maybe. Maybe not. One thing's for sure. Bruno's ready. Bruno versus Tyson. WBC Heavyweight Championship. Saturday, March 16th. Live on pay-per-view from the MGM Grand. The Championship, Part 1. Mike Tyson fought Frank Bruno once before. This is what happened. Tyson gets nailed for the left hook. Tyson looks wobbly as he attacks Bruno. That's the first time I've seen anything like Tyson staggered. Mike Tyson doesn't seem to have that fiery look in his eyes. Bruno versus Tyson, WBC Heavyweight Championship, Saturday, March 16th, live on pay-per-view. Order by Thursday, March 14th, and save $5. Call 866-9800 now. In five short days and nights, Frank Bruno and Mike Tyson will meet in a ring square here at the MGM Grand Hotel Casino in Las Vegas. Hi, I'm Steve Sager with another Bruno Tyson ringside report. In Great Britain, where Frank Bruno was considered a national treasure, it's the first time ever for a pay-per-view event, such as the champ's hero status. In his first title defense and the first title shot this go-around for Tyson, you'll want to call your cable operator to see this Las Vegas reunion for these two. Seven years ago, Tyson stopped Bruno, but not before absorbing a vicious Bruno left. At that time, I rocked him. I'm going to rock him to sleep. I hope Don King's got room in his lap. It's interesting that Mr. Bruno's talking very brave and courageous, but we'll see. 
The only line you'll hear about this week here in Las Vegas is don't miss the Bruno Tyson pay-per-view fight this Saturday night. I'll have more for you again tomorrow. It's well known that Mike Tyson is quite respectful and knowledgeable when it comes to the written history of boxing. He might be just as knowledgeable, although less respectful, of other literature. In the April issue of Esquire magazine, he calls Tolstoy a square. Says that while he was in jail, he made me want to give everything away. Of Dickens, Tyson said he knew villains and celebrities. His father did time in jail. Does Iron Mike realize he'll be fighting a celebrity Saturday night? Charlie Steiner has more. The British monarchy, as we know it, may be falling apart. But the king of England seems secure as he readies himself for the fight of his life. And new WBC heavyweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, WBC heavyweight champion, Mike Tyson. Ladies and gentlemen, the world's greatest boxer, Mike Tyson. Frank Bruno is the most famous sportsman ever to come out of Great Britain. There's not a man child, woman, grandmother, grandma, however old, who doesn't know and love Frank Bruno. But you cannot go five yards without someone pulling him out for a picture or an autograph. He gets something like two or three hundred pictures away a day. He's, well, he's good with the kids, you know, he should be a politician, but he is undoubtedly a folk hero in Britain. The great parade in, in England was, was the end of the Second World War, which was known as VE Day, Victory in Europe Day. When Frank Bruno won the World Heavyweight Championship, they called it VB Day. He said it was televised, there was 45,000 people on the streets of London cheering his name. That's how big Frank Bruno is. I'm just a human being, similar like yourself, just trying to do well, you know. I mean, whether people like me or not, I'm just myself, you know. As you see me, that's me. What's next, Frank? A knighthood? I'm not too sure. I'm just going to go on holiday and get a tan hood. That's what I'm going to get. <laughs> Frank Bruno has become one of the most visible celebrities in England. He has somehow managed to transcend boxing. He is everywhere. On stage. Aye, 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 aye. Hey, Mr. Baseman. I ask you just one thing. Bone. On television. He's just plain on all the time. And with his popularity, he has become a commercial gold mine. Ah, HP! I've got it now. Yes, it's the box set. It's Tyson there. Mike Tyson, definitely. <laughs> There's no mistaking HP's punch. Uh, Michael Jordan is somebody for whom there's a great deal of the, the same kind of popular support. There's a genuine interest in him as a person, personality, his family, and, and his other interests. I mean, that's the way the British people look at Frank. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you, yeah. The marketing of Frank Bruno is no accident. Bruno himself has crafted and honed his image as not merely a boxer, but rather as a family man and an English gentleman. And he sees this fight as yet another marketing opportunity. America is a big, big, big country, you know what I mean? It's spread, you know, you can put England into one little town, you know what I mean? But it's a nice market to, to break, and this is my ticket to get into it. In the Tyson fight, Bruno has it easy. In this respect, he is cast as the good guy. He goes on like he's a bad mama jamma and all them sort of like different things, but, you know I mean, I'm not like Mike Tyson. I haven't been in prison, come out of prison and got... 25 million pounds for doing nothing, you know what I mean? I've worked for my, for my, you know what I mean, bread and butter. It's quite simple. A guy from England is coming to whip his ass. It's quite simple, Charlie. Next week's Mike Tyson-Frank Bruno match will be the first ever pay-per-view in England, and the concept is not yet ingrained in British sports fans. They are balking at the idea not only of paying for the event, but the fact that it will be telecast at 4.30 a.m. The buy rate will tell the story. And many fans there are surprised also that so many American pundits are giving Bruno such a good chance at an upset. They love Frank, but feel the odds are long for a Bruno win. I'm a ferocious fighter. I've been doing this since 11, 12 years old. It's all I've ever done. I've been cultured around fighting, and it's just bred into me to be that way. The championship is the main asset. I'm the champion, the WBC champion. His time is gone. He cannot beat me that night. He cannot. I refuse to be beaten. I refuse to be hurt. There's no way he's going to beat me. No way. I'm sure I could beat him. I must beat him. I have to beat him. I have no other choice. 
So Mike Tyson will have to answer for the people. Do I still have it? It'll be folklore if this man comes out there and wins the heavyweight championship of the world. Well, it's going to be an interesting, intriguing fight. left hook landed on the face of the then 22-year-old Mike Tyson, Frank Bruno came within seconds of becoming the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Now, seven years later, as they prepare to meet again, Tyson is in the early stages of his comeback, and Bruno is more confident, more dangerous than ever before. Welcome to Bruno versus Tyson, the road to the championship. Hi, I'm Steve Albert here at the Sportsbook of the MGM Grand Hotel and Casino. Now, after only seven months, two bouts, and less than four rounds of fighting, Mike Tyson will be facing the most dangerous test on his road to unifying the heavyweight championship of the world. For standing in his way is a truly hungry fighter, Great Britain's Frank Bruno. Coming off the greatest victory in British boxing history, the hard-hitting 250-pound WBC champion believes it is now his time to rule the heavyweight division. By taking this fight, is Tyson risking too much too soon in his comeback career? Does the confident Bruno have the size and power to overcome the speed, skill, and intensity of the former champion? During this half hour, We'll be looking at the histories, strategies, and personalities of both fighters. And we start with Tyson's company. I am a violent individual. It's a feeling that you really don't know how to explain. It's just um, it's something that after years of practice, I guess, and you inherit that intensity. For his first fight in four years, Tyson chose to face Peter McNeely, an aggressive yet lightly regarded brawler from New England. Here we go. And McNeely, as advertised, comes right at Mike Tyson. Down goes McNeely. Seconds into the first round. Uh, usually when two fighters come out, they meet in the center of the ring and they kind of feel each other out a little bit. And in this case, it was almost it was almost like a bar fight. Nothing but brawling. Tyson with a left hook, a right hook, a down goes McNeely again. While some may agree with the stoppage. Tyson and his camp believe that abrupt ending robbed both fighters of a satisfactory conclusion. It was absolutely the wrong thing that should have happened. Um, it would have been an absolute conclusion to Mike's return to the ring. It also robbed Peter McNeely of his day and his son. Despite the brevity of the bout, Tyson was pleased with his performance. I received confidence from just being in the ring, being around the, the midst of a great deal of fans. I knew after I got out of that first fight, it was just smooth sailing. The smooth sailing, however, did not last. For just four days before he was to fight his next opponent, Buster Mathis Jr., the bout was abruptly postponed. Mike sustained an injury to his right thumb that will preclude him from fighting this Saturday night. My objective was to basically fight, but the pain became too intense and then continue hurting during sparring sessions. At this time, it's too sore, too close to the fight in order for him to be allowed to fight. Despite the fact that x-rays would conclusively prove that Tyson had indeed broken his thumb, a rash of negative rumors spread across the country. Anyone that knows Mike know that Mike don't make excuses. And me and John had to make a decision. Ain't no, there's no way in the world we would allow any fighter of ours to go in the ring if he wasn't 100%. Six weeks later, with his thumb still on the mend, Tyson finally met the crafty, light-hitting Mathis. My thumb was never really totally healed 
when I fought um, Matthew and I couldn't get away, it's come from the McNeely fight, didn't fight the title fight. I wanted to get as many fights in as possible. Mike wants to go. He goes with the right hand lead, nails him to the left hook, and busts the ducks underneath the next left hook that Mike has to offer. Oh, he's a very elusive fighter. He's a very, very, I can't think of any other fighter in the heavyweight division who is as elusive as Buster Mathis Jr. I was throwing a lot of left. I was catching with the right. If the punches are just being thrown, if they hit or they don't hit, if you throw only keep the guy preoccupied. Late in the third round, Tyson set up his opponent with almost surgical precision. Now Mike opens up, and the right hand finally dumps him. The movement that he did at the end is called a twist. Yeah, I've been using that movie since I was 15. It's something like a twist in which you combine quick movement of a side step and a twist of the hips and to put you in a position where you can hit him and he can't hit you. I knew he wasn't getting up. The first punch stung him, but I know the second punch hit him on the top of the head and he was unable to get up. This was a good step up against a better fighter and now he's stepping up again to fight Frank Brown. During his comeback, Tyson has been placed in a difficult no-win situation. On the one hand, some members of the media and the public understand and endorse his need for tune-up bouts to work himself into fighting shape. Despite this, others have constantly criticized and continually condemned him for the quality of his opposition. But now, and perhaps prematurely, he'll be facing Frank Bruno, clearly the most dangerous obstacle in his comeback road. We'll find out more next on Bruno versus Tyson, the road to the championship. If I were going to fight Mike Tyson, I would probably pay someone to put a drug in Mike's water. I would uh, probably run around the ring and beg for mercy. Over the last decade, Frank Bruno has been a perennial world-class contender, earning a reputation as one of boxing's hardest hitting heavyweights. Yet overshadowing all of his accomplishments was his inability to win the big ones, as he lost world title bouts to Lennox Lewis. Tim Witherspoon and a five-round brawl to Mike Tyson in 1989. And many, especially on this side of the Atlantic, wondered if Bruno had the chin or the stamina to accomplish his dream of becoming heavyweight champion of the world. But six months ago, when Frank Bruno entered London's Wembley Stadium to face WBC champion Oliver McCall, it was a night that will never be forgotten in British boxing history. I was a desperate man for the criticism. I was 34, the fourth time fight for the heavyweight championship, and people were writing me off left, right, and center. But what we were trying to do for Frank was obviously get everything on our side, and what we tried to come and what we tried to do in the ring, and we did that, was to, to give it a real patriotic flavor. Everybody there was given a Union Jack uh, to wave. We'd done the national anthem. We had the guards band there, and I thought, if we can get the crowd, the atmosphere on our side, that's going to give him that bit extra. And in front of 35,000 delirious British fans, an inspired Bruno aggressively attacked McCall. Using his jab to set up a surprising array of punches. And Frank's got a better jab than anybody in the business. The idea was to get off to a good start and keep ahead of the race. Bruno cannot lose his concentration. He's got to keep that jab up. He can't afford to let McCall get started. As long as he's punching first, he's got this fight. When you're fighting a champion, you've got to beat him and beat him very, very well. Take him, jab him, hold him, turn him around, do anything to beat him. As the fight entered into the middle rounds, a desperate McCall launched a furious attack on his tiring opponent. Oh, oh he just got hit. A right hook by McCall, who is beginning to come on. And that landed cleanly. No question, Time. there's a difference in, in the attitude of Oliver McCall. I still have Bruno over McCall at this point, but McCall is coming on. You're a motivator, and you've got to motivate your guy. And uh, I knew how much it meant to him, so I was just putting into his head what he wanted to remind him of what he'd worked for for the last 13 years. Francis frantically urging on. Frank Bruno, he says you've got to earn it. Entering the final round, McCall could win only by knockout. Yet even Bruno's most ardent fans worried their exhausted fighter would be unable to survive the final three minutes. Once again, losing the big one and squandering his last chance at a title. Frank is dead on his feet. He's so tired of that. He's just hit for the taking. Oliver can get up. Almost. McCall with an overhand right just missed Bruno. 
but I'll be a liar. Because I said I wasn't tired. Yes, I was tired. It was 12 hard, grueling rounds. It's got bitchy in there. Got very vicious, very nasty. Yes, I was tired. But not tired to a point that I had to go to the hospital for exhaustion. I couldn't stand up, raise my hands or nothing like that. But I was tired. I was standing behind me and it was tough in there but I done it, you know? Yes, I was crying like a little boy. Crying like a little boy, mate. Crying, which I felt embarrassed. Crying, but I was crying like a little boy. If someone gave me 50 million pounds, it wouldn't mean as much as this means to me because I've been striving, working hard for 16 years. It means happiness, contentment, joy, pleasure, hard work, sweat and tears, and happiness. It is difficult for us here in the States to understand the enormity of Bruno's victory in the country of England, for it prides itself on being the birthplace of modern boxing. And by beating McCall, Bruno became the first British fighter this century to win a major heavyweight championship in the ring. And he was now not only the country's most admired sports hero, but the most revered fighter in British boxing history. He's like the Pied Piper, you know. They say he's the second biggest draw apart from the Queen. He's just kind of an archetypal Brit. He's modest. He doesn't show off. He gives his all. Whether it's good enough or not, he gives everything. He holds nothing back. And that's why they love him. Now, at the pinnacle of his career and at the peak of his popularity, Bruno will make his first defense against his old adversary, Mike Tyson. I've got plans of a future. Um, I'm not going to give it up that easy. I've been up, down, down in the gutter, treaded on, spatted on, disrespected. I've been through all that. This time is my time, it's my future, and I can't wait to fight Mike Tyson. Coming up, the long, curious, and sometimes bitter history between these two men. Next on Bruno versus Tyson, the road to the championship. How would I fight Mike Tyson? I just wouldn't fight him, you know? I would say forget it, I wouldn't get in the ring. With full padding. <laughs> a lot of wraps, like a mummy, or like the Michelin Man. <laughs> Mike Tyson? Yeah, I do a lot of running, wind sprints, you know, around the ring. Hi, I'm Steve Albert, and welcome back to Bruno vs. Tyson, the road to the championship. When Mike Tyson walked into the ring against Frank Bruno for the first time, he was the undisputed heavyweight champion and the self-proclaimed baddest man on the planet. The year was 1989, and in his last bout, Tyson had needed only 91 seconds to destroy the highly regarded Michael Spinks in a breathtaking display of speed and power. And now, few, if any, believed he would have trouble with his British challenger. However, a series of highly publicized and unpredictable events would postpone the bout numerous times. A bout that proved to be more dangerous than anyone expected. I had broke my hand. I had, fight I had problems with my wife at the time. Um, I had gained like 70 pounds, and it was just all uh, crazy. I was just killing myself, you know what I mean? Spiritually, physically, intellectually, I was just a mess. Because then again, when I was 21, 20, 19, I thought I, I really believed that I could beat the world. I'm, and I'm actually being beat the whole world, the whole five billion people at one time. <laughs> the constant postponements and continual distractions also took their toll on Bruno, who trained diligently, if not obsessively, for this bout. I did overtrain, you know what I mean? I went down, I lost stones, pounds. Mentally, I was exhausted, worn out, tired. Couldn't, you know, getting up in the morning, then the fight was postponed, getting down, trying to get yourself up again. It was a nightmare. Finally, the two combatants met in the ring. Bruno's showing that he's not afraid. Hang on. Bruno's already tagged with the right hand. And there goes Bruno for the first time in the fight. The flash knock down, I think, is more of a slip to the knockdown. If you see the fight, he didn't connect right. I slipped in the corner and he came. And I went like that. And the referee counted as a knockdown. 
Sensing a quick finish to the fight, Tyson attacked aggressively, perhaps too aggressively. Tyson gets nailed with a left hook. Tyson looks wobbly as he attacks Bruno. Bruno continues to throw. Tyson was caught and wobbled. He hit me with a pretty good shot, but just it was more solid than anything. I didn't avoid it. I knew I had him hurt. But he's a good fighter, you can't take nothing away from him. He was onto me like a harbor shot, close to me, and I couldn't get the range of what I wanted to. Surviving that left hook, Tyson took control of the fight, ending it in the fifth round. A fighter could not be saved by the bell as the big right hand lands. Tyson knows he's got him in big trouble. If he doesn't answer it, Richard Steele has moved in and has stopped the fight. Well, he was out on his feet, basically. And um, he took some um, horrific punches, I think. And the referee came to stop the fight. For Bruno, this loss was so bitter, so devastating, he disappeared from boxing for almost three years. And while he used this time to train furiously, in his obsession, he wondered if he still had a future in the sport he loved so much. Everything was going through my mind, different what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go. And I was training not twice a day, I was training three times a day, running all the time. Every gym I went in, I wanted to make my, myself stronger, get more better, practice different moves, and I just wanted to get out. I just wanted to do it and see if I still had it in me, and I did, and it paid off. It paid off in a big way, for in his comeback, a more determined, more focused Bruno won eight out of nine bouts, including the WBC Heavyweight Championship and a chance for a rematch with Mike Tyson. There's going to be a world heavyweight title fight between the champion, Frank Bruno. When I fought Mike Tyson in 1989, I was a challenger, and I feel very, very proud to defend my title, and I'm going to keep my title for 1986. Now we want to bring up the young man that uh, is making this challenge, Mike Tyson. I won't be denied. March 16, come. You'll be minus your championship. I like Frank. I'm just competitively, that's just the way I am. I'm just ferocious like that. I've seen all that crap business and whatever. That doesn't really scare me. In fact, it gave me inspiration. And during the traditional photo session, a lengthy stare down took place. I looked him right through his eye and I didn't blink, I didn't move. And I was holding my belt up and I was going like that. And I mean that from the heart. I, you know, I was just so into it, just happy. I saw the belt and I just, I just saw red, man. I just had the belt on my waist. It gives me inspiration and determination to do some serious damage on that night, you know? It's going to be war. It's quite simple. Coming up, final words and parting shots. Next on Bruno versus Tyson, the road to the championship. If I was going to fight Mike Tyson, I would uh, first get up, make all the funeral arrangements. For $5 million, Mike Tyson can knock me out anywhere. To the body, man. Work the body, work the body. That's how you cut down a big tree. Welcome back to Bruno versus Tyson, the road to the championship. I'm Steve Albert here at the MGM Grand Hotel and Casino. A decade ago, Mike Tyson became the youngest in boxing history to win a world heavyweight title. Now, at the age of 29, after only four rounds of fighting in his comeback, Tyson will try to regain the WBC title from the hard-hitting and determined Frank Bruno. You still see him last. I'll be in just tremendous shape. I'll be in tremendous focus. I'm going to be throwing punches with bad intention. I'm a ferocious fighter. I'm mean, vicious and ferocious. I, I, I don't know. It's just, um, it's, I drive off that. At the height of his career and unintimidated by Tyson's reputation, Bruno and his fans believe the formidable Brit is too big, too strong for his aggressive yet possibly ring rusty opponent. I can see myself knocking out Mike Tyson spectacularly, knocking him out. There's no way, he just has to come straight at me all the time. Straight at me. But it'd be like running into a wall all the time. That was then, this is now. Um, I'm the champ now, the WBC champ, and he's going to try and take it off me, but he's only going to get a look at it because his time is gone. I don't believe that he believed that he'd been any better when he fought me back then, and I'm any less. I don't believe that he believes that he's better. He said he is, but I don't believe that he believes that he is. I'm just sure I believe him. The opponent, as far as the American public's concerned, the British line is going to fight back. 
We're going we're gonna to retain the title. We're going to come back to old Blighty with it and go on to make more money for Frank Bruno and everybody concerned and unify the title. That's what we're aiming to do. Mike comes out. He's hungry. He wants to vindicate himself. He feels that he had four lost years. He wants to make reparations, but not by asking someone to give him arms, but to be able to deal with it pragmatically and realistically, doing what he does best, knock people out. So Mike says, I'm going out there to destroy. You can see Bruno versus Tyson for the WBC Heavyweight Championship with more world title bouts live Saturday, March 16th on pay-per-view. I'm Steve Albert, and thanks for watching this edition of the Showtime Championship Boxing Report. I'm Bruce Seldon, the WBA heavyweight champion. I'm Francois Berta, the IBF heavyweight champion. I'm Frank Bruno, the WBC heavyweight champion. Although we come from three different continents and hold three different world titles, we only fight on one network, that's Showtime. The road to the heavyweight championship runs through Showtime. Hi, I'm Bill Boggs with the Showtime Championship Boxing Report update. I am standing on the top of the stratosphere, 1,149 feet, the highest point in Las Vegas. You cannot get any higher than this except on Saturday night, Bruno versus Tyson, the WBC World Heavyweight Championship fight. I'm cautioning again, obey my commands at all times. Is there any questions? Shake hands, good luck. The week-long buildup to the Heavyweight Championship fight is part of what makes the Heavyweight Championship the most dramatic and anticipated event in both sports and show business. Every day there's a mounting sense of energy and combine that with the already frantic pulse of Las Vegas and then put superstar Mike Tyson into the mix and give him the formidable challenge of taking away the WBC championship belt from Frank Bruno, a savage punching Englishman. And you've got a fight and a week worth watching. There's no way he's gonna beat me, no way. I'm just sure I could beat him, I must beat him, I have to beat him, I have no other choice but to beat him. This has been a Showtime Championship Boxing Report update. You can see Bruno versus Tyson for the WBC Heavyweight Championship this Saturday, live on pay-per-view. And the man who would be champion again, unburdening himself at the final press conference before he has a tete-a-tete -tete with Mr. Bruno. We'll be back. On Saturday night, Mike Tyson will fight for its title at stake for the first time in more than six years. It will be for Frank Bruno's WBC belt. But there has been very little attention paid to the fight, relatively speaking, for two reasons. The NCAA tournament and the fact that Tyson has sequestered himself from the media even more so than usual. No public workouts, even fewer public sightings. Today, at the MGM final press conference, the final press conference for the two fighters, it might as well have been their first. Here's Al Bernstein in Las Vegas. The final press conference for the Frank Bruno Mike Tyson bout not only included a large throng of the media, but a cast of thousands on the dais. They didn't see any major fireworks develop, but they did hear from both boxers. And as usual, Tyson kept it short. I'm just happy to be here. I'm in great shape. I'm fit, ferocious as ever. And I look forward to a good fight and being victorious and champion of the world. And that's all I can say. I'm just here to work. I'm ready to get it on. And I'd like to thank all the American people for being nice towards me and saying 
different different things about me. I'd like to thank all the Bridges people for coming along, and I promise you, I will not let you down. I come in with the belt, and I'm leaving with my belt. Thank you very much, and God bless you all. There was more than little intensity between the two men, and this may mirror the early part of their fight if, like McNeely and Mathis before him, Bruno decides to start quickly. What will the early pace be like? I'm just coming to take care of business. It's going to be explosive, you know? Very, very explosive. Don't blink. Don't blink. Well, as you can see, Frank Bruno is a very confident man. He would certainly not agree with the odds, which have him as an 8-to-1 underdog. He was as high as 10-to-1. And in a very un-Bruno-like statement, he actually has said, I'm going to knock Mike Tyson out of the ring right into Don King's lap. I hope Don King's getting his lap ready. <laughs> Only in America. In Las Vegas, Al Bernstein... ESPN. Not a pretty picture. All told, in a press conference that started 47 minutes late, before the question and answer session began, Tyson spoke for a grand total of 16 seconds. Bruno spoke for 32 seconds. Tyson remains now an 8-to-1 favorite to beat Bruno Saturday night. I'll be joining Al Bernstein on Friday in Las Vegas for coverage of Bruno and Tyson. Larry. He's right. I respect him as a man for making, I mean, stand up for what he believes, you know I mean? I don't think he should be suspended for that, but you know, that's um, the circumstances he has to deal with. I believe that um, the national an anthem should be disrespected, but that's his belief. I respect him as a man for making, I mean, stand up for what he believes. You know, I mean, I don't think he should be suspended for that, but you know, that's um, the circumstances he has to deal with um, with his organization that he's involved with. You know that little game that boxers play before a big fight? Each guy refuses to enter the ring first. Well, Mike Tyson and Frank Bruno have been playing that game with their press conferences. Finally today, when both men entered at the same time, 47 minutes late, the talk continued about Saturday night's WBC heavyweight championship fight. No. Frank Warren and Don King gave me the opportunity, yeah? Um, I'm making four million, Mike Tyson's making 30 million. If I was pounds, though, tell him, you know, you yeah, keep talking right, to pounds. Yeah, all right, yeah, no no pounds. All right, but throw it on, Frank, you can handle it. No, no you can handle it. Go on, yes, go on, Frank. Relax. Talk to him, baby. Get, get your lap ready, Don, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm just happy to be here. I'm in great shape. I'm fit, ferocious as ever, and I look forward to a good fight and being victorious and champion of the world. And that's all I can say. I'm just here to work. I'm ready to get it on. Now, you heard Bruno make reference to Don King's lap, right? What exactly does that mean? Listen closely for that and more on the current champ. Here's Terry Badu. Frank Bruno, man of the people. When Britain's best-loved sportsman finally hoisted the heavyweight crown after three failed attempts, it was like lifting a weight off the back of the whole nation. Raised in the belief that heavyweight champions are American, Bruno's decision over Oliver McCall last September was proof positive to fight fans everywhere that the USA does not have a monopoly on winners. British fighters are very, very serious hombres, you know what I mean? Black, white, yellow and pink. We're serious guys over in England. We ain't sort of like fish and chip boys where you can take the mickey out of us and walk all over us. We're very proud guys, you know? However, despite the seriousness of his profession, the root of Bruno's popularity in Britain has more to do with his willingness to play the clown. Big Frank, with his clumsy one-liners and pantomime poses, is in many ways like the nation's big brother. Strong, uncomplicated, and always ready to have some fun. I'm just an average um, guy, you know. Works as a be on the building site as a metal polisher, works as a barcelona man, and done all sorts of, like, crazy different things to survive and they could relate with me you know i think so what you see is what you get a philosophy that's helped turn a modestly talented boxer into a national institution honored by the queen with one of britain's highest royal awards the mbe frank himself is not unlike royalty in that whatever their feelings about how he makes a living to the british public he remains our frank he's one of those uh, big friendly giants ain't he? Just, uh, one of those friendly types he appears to be one of the crowd. He, he likes to mingle with the general public. He, he likes to pretend he's a sportsman. I think he is. He's done a lot for charity, he does a lot for children. I mean, he's a, he's a, good, uh, a good British citizen, as they say. Now backed by the good wishes of the Brits, 5,000 of whom will make the trip to Las Vegas, Bruno once again prepares to do battle for Queen, country, and a few million dollars. 
Saturday's bout will be fight number 45 for the 34-year-old Londoner, a career that's brought 40 wins, 38 by knockout, and just four defeats, including a 1989 loss to Tyson that Bruno is determined to avenge. That was history, you know what I mean? I, I would like to talk about the Tyson fight today, which I'm going to knock him out and knock him right into Don King's lap. That's not being cocky, that's being straightforward, positive, and that's what I'm going to do to him. So the scene is set. Bruno against Tyson, hero against villain, Britain against the USA. With the champion and his fans preferring to believe that just occasionally, nice guys can finish first. Terry Badu, CNN Sports. Yeah, what a great quote from Bruno. I'm going to knock Tyson right into Don King's lap. The big guys hit the scales tomorrow night at 11 Eastern, and guess what? You can see the weigh-in live right here on CNN. Nick Charles will be in Vegas for those festivities. Next on Up Close, as Mike Tyson gets ready for Frank Bruno, we'll talk with James Tony. He says he can beat both fighters. Up Close is up next. Close to the headlines, Las Vegas, Nevada. We're just a couple of days away from the Frank Bruno-Mike Tyson fight, and British-born heavyweight champion Frank Bruno appears to have as much of America on his side as Tyson does, at least according to him. He says, and we quote, nearly every single American I've run into wants me to teach Tyson a lesson. His own country wants me to kick his ass. Can I say that on television? I think I can. I'm quoting him, which I will do. That's what he says. My money is on Don King's hair still standing after the fight. What's your thought on Tyson Bruno? What should we look for in this bout? Man, Tyson, Tyson going to destroy Bruno. I don't know why Bruno going to run off at the mouth. You know, he's only going to get himself into more danger. But, but Mike has not really had a true test since he's come out of prison. Well, see, it's like this. Tyson, like me, he, he gets motivated for the competition, to love his competition. His last two competitions, we know... <laughs> They were softies, you know, and you can't really fault the man because he got he knocked the guys out, you know. If he didn't knock the guys out, then you have to start talking about how he, he, he can fault him. But he's been destroying these guys. Took care of Mathis Jr. easily, so the more Frank Bruno talks, the more it hurts worse his is chances. Get, <laughs> worse is going to get. Give us, a, give us a round. Uh, I, think he'll knock, I think Tyson will knock him out within three rounds. Within three, that quickly. You know? Now, you know Mike. You, you, you are friends. Yep. You've talked to Mike Tyson. And, uh, and how often have you talked to him since he's been out of prison? Well, I saw him about four or five times. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. He's serious about fighting. I think when he's, when he's in that frame of mind, can't nobody be hard for anybody to beat him. Is he a different person this time around than when he, before he went into prison? Basically, yeah, you know, all around he's a nice person, a nicer person. How about fighter-wise? Fighter-wise, Has he's, he shown you enough that, that he had before he went into prison? No, point is he only show, he only show you what he wants you to see. Now, what you see Saturday night, that'll show you if that's the Mike, real Mike Tyson is back. Is it? He rides the occasion, like he did against Razor Ruddick. He still may not have to show enough, though, against Frank Bruno. Well, Bruno's not too much. His real, <laughs> too his real tough, his toughest to fall as a heavyweight will, will come against Riddick Bowe. And you think that'll happen? It should happen within a year or so. Yeah, that's, the fight, that's the fight that everybody's going to start demanding. And Riddick Bowe's a, is, you know, is a hell of a fighter. Ha has Mike mentioned that to you? They've mentioned it, but, you know, basically not, it's not in the serious stages. It's down the road. How intimidating is Mike Tyson still, do you think? To everybody in the ring, you know, when he gets in there, they start to cringe you know, so he's still, he's still a formidable foe. Everybody still think he's, you know, I'm going to kick your butt type attitude, you know. They're scared of that, especially Bruno, because Bruno's really talking. And he gonna be, he gonna, he's going to wind up at Las Vegas, Las Vegas Memorial Hospital on Saturday night. <laughs> when you talk about uh, Mike Tyson, do you have any, if you guys hang around, do you guys ever pal around outside of the ring no, away not, from boxing? No, not at all. You know, we just, you know, just cool high what's happening, and that's it, you know. Well, like I said, if it came to the point where it got like that, and we had to separate because, like I said, I never try to get too chummy with guys. I might have to fight one day. <laughs> well, how would you fight Mike Tyson? Well, Mike, he's the perfect, he's the perfect style for me because he comes at me, and I was, you know, just pick him apart, jab, uppercut, <laughs> hooks to the body, straight right hands down the middle, zing. Hey, so you could beat Mike Tyson? Easy. Easy? Yeah. Well, then we should work on that. Let's set that hey, fight Chris, up. you hook that fight up, I'll give you 10%. We'll cut time out. Do, do you really? <laughs> do you do you really believe that though? That you can? Yeah, definitely. I, you know, I I never see nothing. I never say nothing that I don't mean. You know, all like I said, 17, the next 17, 24 months, I start to feel a lot, of, I feel a lot a little bit more. I feel a lot better. You know, fighting bigger competition, bigger man, you'll see. Because like I said, I got the most skills in boxing. Like I said, I'm the most, I'm the fighter in the, in the boxing world today who has all the skills. I'm a complete fighter. I'm a hell of a shape. Yeah, well, who would you rate high up there with Mike Tyson as a fighter that you respect? I respect a lot of fighters. Like, I like, you know, like, I like Kevin Kelly. He's a really good fighter. Really? He's, the, he's a real good fighter, you know. Bronco McCarty, he's another one of my guys, you know. I like a lot of Reddick Bo. Reddick Bo's a hell of a fight. Like so if, if in a Bo Tyson bout, it, it's it, tough. I can't, I can't get between that. Oh, you, know? you can't. Chavez, um, Oscar De La Hoya, real good fighters, you know. 
So I gotta give them guys high praise. Buster Douglas is coming back. What do you think about that? <laughs> uh, Buster Douglas is coming back. You know, I think he should, you know, if he's a real man, come back and fight Mike Tyson so Mike Tyson can redeem himself. Is Just the... like Roy Jones should do against me. <laughs> so you so you want the Roy Jones rematch first. Exactly. All right, and then you're going to, you know, you'll work your way into the heavyweight division. And no, you... what, what, what is it? My initial plan was just to fight Roy Jones and then go back up. But what, uh, the way I'm feeling right now, I'm feeling good physically and mentally, is to stay down for about three or four fights, unify the titles, and then go back to get the cruiserweight title, then go up and get the heavyweight championship. How much did it scare you when Tommy Morrison came out and, and tested yeah, positive for I mean, that, was a, that was like a great scare right there because you know, everybody out there, you know what I'm saying, you can't catch it this way, you catch it that way. And he woke up the boxing community. Is the heavyweight division in need of help, in your opinion? Man, Tyson, he's the cure. Tyson and Reddick both, the two best fighters out there right now. And I feel right with them two guys, they said, and him for George, I can't forget Big George, Big Daddy. George is, you know, he's still in there. But um, I think it's time for them, everybody start coming together and putting the real fights together. Quit trying to duck everybody. That's the problem with boxing today. Everybody, all the champions are ducking the good fighters. The, the promoters up there putting guys in with softies. We can't have that. Can't have softies. We'll see what Mike Tyson is made of on Saturday night against uh, Frank Bruno. Friday night on Larry King Live, almost a year since walking out of prison, Mike Tyson steps into a championship ring and previews his fight to regain the crown. Friday night, 9 Eastern on CNN. Out in Las Vegas. Nick, you guys have a special live event for us coming up in a few moments, don't you? Boy, and it's getting rowdy here. It's packed here, Fred, already. I'm here with Bob Lorenz at the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. Where we're about to take you to the scales and show you what happens live. Frank Bruno is here. Mike Tyson is set to arrive. They're going to step on a scale behind me, and then both will join me to comment on what it all means tonight and what it all may mean Saturday night. But now let's go back to you, Vince, an important day and night in basketball. Welcome back to Sports Tonight, live from Las Vegas, where it's relatively cool right now outside the MGM Grand Hotel, but things are heating up inside the building, where in just a few moments, Mike Tyson and WBC heavyweight champ Frank Bruno will step on the scales in preparation for their title fight this Saturday night. I'm Bob Lorenz. Nick Charles is on stage where the fighters will weigh in in just moments. And the developing story of the week is the lack of respect that Frank Bruno feels that he's receiving. And Nick, he feels just a more than slighted, doesn't he? Well, you know, he's a 1-7 to seven underdog, Bob, and slighted at the very least. At the most, he is angered. He told me last week he was humiliated in his three prior unsuccessful attempts at winning the title. Now he's champion, and he's passing me right now. And he says that he hasn't earned, the, he hasn't gotten the kind of respect and the kind of uh, money that he merits. Well, Bruno knew what he was getting into. To get a tit uh, title fight against Oliver McCall, he agreed to make Mike Tyson his first title defense. Tyson grabs the lion's share of the attention and the money. He gets 30 million for this, Bruno gets 6 million, Bob. Well, Nick, the challenger, Mike Tyson, is ready to step on the scale. The PA announcer has taken over. Let's listen in as Mike Tyson steps on the scale. Introducing Iron Mike, Mike Tyson getting Tyson. ready to step on the scale, and here he comes. A mixed crowd. A lot of Frank Bruno fans are here, so certainly Mike Tyson is not met with uh, overall acclaim. Tyson in the last fight weighed 200. Tyson in the last fight weighed 218 pounds. He's expected to weigh something similar as he steps to the scales. Twenty pounds, two hundred twenty pounds for Mike Tyson. So Tyson weighing uh, pretty much the same as he weighed seven years ago. But Nick, one wonders in that case, what's the difference between the Mike Tyson then and now? Well, Bob, the weight sounds fine. His condition we don't know because the workouts were closed. And the one thing we don't know uh, is his desire. We knew the things that made him great. Will he jab? Will he be elusive? Will he go to the body? Those are the things we'll have to see. Let's go now. Frank Bruno is about to step onto the scale, it looks like. The world, Frank Bruno. Bruno weighing in at 247 pounds, as you heard. That's a good 20 pounds heavier than when he fought Mike Tyson seven years ago. 
As you can see, it's a lot of muscle mass. It's not a lot of flab. And Frank Bruno says that's to his advantage, that he can hammer Tyson perhaps with that extra weight, that it will add uh, to his punching power. Now let's go to uh, Frank Bruno with Nick Charles on the stage. Nick? Well, Frank Bruno isn't with, with me yet, but you, you make a very good point, Bob. What's going to have to happen is that Frank Bruno is going to have to stand tall, use his reach also and his superior stature. He's got a lot of weight going for him here, and he certainly weighs a lot more than he did the first time. We're waiting for the champion to come, but first the challenger, if we could get him over here. There's a big crowd around. But once again, uh, Bob, he's seven years older. He's 34 years old now. And the big question for Bruno is, what's going to be the difference? When we look at him, he's 8-1 since Tyson beat him last, but a lot of them were very non-eventful bouts. He was pressed to go 10 rounds against an over-the-hill Carl the, uh, the Truth Williams and then beat Oliver McCall, who was not at his best that night. So very much remains. He's a 1-7 to seven underdog. Tyson, or, or, or seven to one underdog. Tyson, a 10-1 to one, or 1-10 one to 10 favorite in this fight for a lot of good reasons. Well, Nick, let's look back at some memories of the last fight in February of 1989, just to recollect what happened. And uh, ultimately, it was Tyson who knocked him out in the fifth round. Let's go back to Nick now on stage with Mike Tyson. Mike, 220 pounds. Can you comment on your weight and your condition? I'm in the best condition of my life. And after March 16th, I've been the new heavyweight champion of the world. How big a fire is burning in your belly now? It's been six long years since you've been champion. Now you're two days away from a shot. And you watch and see. What about Frank Bruno's weight? He's heavier than he was before. How will that concern you? I have no complaints with that. No problems with that whatsoever. It means nothing to me. Mike, you told me last week your reputation is built on destruction. Do you feel a need to win this fight explosively? I'm going to do a good job. And trust you, after this, you won't forget this for a long time. Okay. Mike Tyson, we'll see you Saturday night. Thank you very much. Okay. What? Nick, you mentioned some of the physical differences between these fighters when you talk to Mike, and uh, there are some differences. Bruno, of course, is a much larger man, as we mentioned. He weighs a good 30 pounds uh, more than Mike Tyson, and one wonders if the reach will come into play. One also wonders how much do these fighters remember about each other the last time they met seven years ago. Uh, Nick, is he standing by with uh, Frank Bruno? Let's go down to Nick. Frank, you're nearly 20 pounds heavier than you were seven years ago against Mike Tyson. How that was obvious, obviously by design. How will you exploit that advantage? I feel much more stronger mentally and physically, and this is my time. Tyson's had his time, you know. Who God bless, nobody curse. And thank you for all the British fans for sticking behind me. Thank you. That's very nice. You've said quite often, Frank, you're overshadowed in this. Your money is less. Uh, you're a you're a prohibitive underdog. How does that fuel you? Does that build a fire in you? Very much a fire, you know. I mean, I've been an underdog all of my life, and I've been up to the mountains four times, and this is my time, this is Bruno's time. Tyson's had his time, you know. He's made his money. I'm going to do him a favor and knock him out right into Don King's lap. Well, Frank, at age 34, why should we suspect things would be different seven years later? Well, just turn up on Saturday the 16th of March, and you'll see how things are going to be different. I'm going to knock him right into Don King's lap. Quite simple. Not being flash, not being cocky. I've got a family to support, free. You a beautiful wi a wife. Sorry? You flatly predict a knockout then. Knockout right into Don King's lap. You got some crowd behind you here. Very, very, the nice crowd. You couldn't get a better crowd. I've not only got the British um, crowd behind me, I've got the American um, people behind me as well, you know what I mean? Well, it's a whole world versus Mike Tyson. Them people don't need to be in this game. They're very bad for the business. Okay, Frank Bruno will see you after the fight, Saturday. Okay, Bob, we'll go back to you upstairs. Well, Nick, it never hurts to have a good crowd behind you, as Frank Bruno found out tonight. We want to remind you to stay with CNN throughout the weekend for the latest fight news. And then, of course, Saturday night, join Nick Charles here at the MGM Grand for full post-fight coverage. That's going to do it from the MGM Grand. For Nick Charles, I'm Bob Lorenz. Stay tuned now. CNN Sports Tonight will continue right after this. It looks like that'll do for the college hoops for tonight at least. More to come, though. Tyson and Bruno weigh in for their championship fight. We'll have the poundage for you. Oh. If the war in the ring is half as good as the war of words has been, we are in for one heck of a fight come Saturday night. Mike Tyson and Frank Bruno weighed in tonight for their WBC championship bout. Tyson, 220 pounds. You see it there. That's about as usual. Bruno, 247. Despite the fact that that is 19 pounds heavier than he was the last time the two met, sure did look ripped tonight. With more, here is Nick Charles. 
These same two fighters stepped on a scale in this same city seven years ago. Thursday night, Frank Bruno and Mike Tyson were both back. Older, heavier, and with one other difference. Their situations were reversed. Mike Tyson this time was the challenger. Six years removed from the heavyweight title. And when he strode up to the scale, he looked cut, he looked strong, and he looked confident at 220 pounds. Two more than he weighed for the first Bruno fight. Then it was the champion spotlight. Frank Bruno at 247 is 19 pounds heavier this time. And he sees that as a clear asset. I feel much more stronger mentally and physically, and this is my time. Tyson's had his time, you know? Who, God bless, nobody curse. And thank you for all the British fans for sticking behind me. He's made his money. I'm going to do him a favor and knock him out right into Don King's lap. I'm in the best condition of my life. And after March 16th, I'll be the new heavyweight champion of the world. I'm going to do a good job. And trust you, after this, you won't forget this for a long time. There were no stare downs afterwards. Only two men, both feeling self-assured and ready to turn talk into action and results Saturday night. Nick Charles, CNN, Las Vegas. And, of course, stay tuned to CNN for a comprehensive coverage following the fight Saturday night in Vegas. Tyson comeback takes a big step Saturday night in Las Vegas when Iron Mike meets Frank Bruno. This will be Tyson's first title shot since returning to the ring. On the line, Bruno's WBC Heavyweight Championship. The weigh-in at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. And 500 fans from Britain showed up singing Bruno's name and cheering on the 10-to-1 underdog. Hundreds of others were turned away at the door. Meanwhile, members of Team Tyson responded in their special way, off with the head, inciting the Brits. Not to be outdone, Bruno's wife and business manager led the crowd in chanting, We are the champions. Following this, it was time for the weigh-in with Tyson up first. 220 pounds, 220 pounds for Mike Tyson. 247 pounds. 247 pounds for the champion, Frank Bruno. Following the way in the customary stare down between fighters and Bruno, let it be known he doesn't care for Tyson or his entourage. If Casamada was in his, well, he is in his grave now, and he can see all them amateurs and them terrible people behind him, he would be turning in his grave, you know what I mean? To have all them people shouting confidence, he must be lacking in something. But I want to knock him out so good into Don Kenton King's lap and wipe him off the map because he's bad for boxing and his people are bad for boxing. Tyson is younger, shorter, lighter, and has a shorter reach, but Mike gets around $30 million, while Bruno pockets $6 million. Mike Tyson and Frank Bruno have been weighed. They're getting closer to trying to measure each other. Saturday in Las Vegas, Tyson hit the scales at 220 pounds. Frank Bruno, the WBC title holder, stepped in with a little more flesh. He was 247 in skivvies on Thursday. Some other physical features here in the tail of the tape. Bruno, five years older, three and a half inches taller, 11 inch reach advantage. Tyson has larger ankles. With more on Frank Bruno, here's Charlie Steiner out in Las Vegas. Bring on the champion! Bring on the champion! Kenny, the way in here last night was only a sample of what we can expect here tomorrow night, where they're expecting 5,000 Englishmen to root on Frank Bruno, who may be the single most popular English athlete in history. They are saying it's the biggest sporting event in England in 30 years, not since the 1966 World Cup soccer final. Frank Bruno is simply a phenomenon overseas. He is a true Brit, and he is our cover story tonight. The odds for Saturday night's fight have gone from Tyson, a 10-to-1 favorite, down to 6-to-1. Joined, as usual, by Al Bernstein, who's been covering Frank Bruno all week. And you've detected a change in attitude in the affable Englishman. Well, I'll tell you, comments like, I'll whip his ass, are very un-Bruno-like, to be sure. Um, when he came to this country, we saw a difference in Frank Bruno. A lot more bravado from him, much more outgoing in his comments. Very, very confident. But even with it all, he's still been kind of the consummate PR man picking only those people that he thinks could be perceived as villains to criticize, i.e. Don King, Tyson and his people, people that he thinks he can get away with being very vocal against. He wants to win over the American public. Can he win over Mike Tyson? Well, I'll tell you what, people feel he has a puncher's chance, and they feel that for one very simple reason, that left hook that Bruno landed in their first fight, and the fact that he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mike Tyson right from the beginning, and I think that is his ticket to victory. If he can do it, walk to Mike Tyson just like Peter McNeely did, pressure him, make him make a mistake early in this fight. And we really don't know anything about Tyson because he's not sparred publicly, and he said very little publicly. The usual shroud of secrecy around Tyson during his incarnation. 
And we'll be back, of course, tomorrow for all the pre- and post-fight coverage for Al Bernstein, Charlie Steiner, ESPN here at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Back to you, Bob. I'm in great shape. I'm fit, ferocious as ever, and I look forward to a good fight and being victorious and champion of the world. This is my time. This is Bruno's time. Tyson's had his time. You know, he's made his money. I'm going to do him a favor and knock him out right into Don King's lap. Tomorrow night, Mike Tyson and Frank Bruno slug it out. Does the youngest heavyweight champion in history still live up to the name Iron Mike? Find out tonight. Plus. Now, live from Los Angeles, here's Larry King. Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of Larry King Live. We are in Los Angeles. Joining us from Las Vegas is the former heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson. In a couple of minutes, we'll be joined by boxing promoter Don King. Tyson takes on Frank Bruno tomorrow night, and he hopes to retain the WBC heavyweight crown. How do you feel, Mike? I feel great, Larry. How are you doing yourself? Uh, I'm super. I miss being around with you. It's, <laughs> uh, let me, let me, uh, what's it like the night before a fight? What's that feeling like? 24 hours away. Uh, it's very difficult to describe. You just, um, I'm just anticipating tomorrow night. I mean, are you on edge? Is it a nervous edge? I'm, I'm never really on edge. I'm basically cool. I'm basically a cool character, and I'm just looking forward to it. Uh, any concern at all? I'm not too concerned, no. no uh, Muhammad Ali told me once after he had finally retired, that's really, he was always concerned, since the other man was always trying to hurt him. You're not. Well, I'm trying to hurt him as well. So I guess he should be concerned as much as I should then, huh? <laughs> All right, Frank Bruno, uh, you beat him uh, seven years ago. What's changed? Um, I'm, just, I'm just looking forward to fighting again. I'm just a good fighter, and I believe that I'm capable of beating this man. Now, the last time we spoke, you were going to have a few more fights before you fought for the title. What sped up the program? Well, I've been doing well. I felt well. I saw my opposition, and I was willing to take the challenge. What, what follows this? Let's say you're victorious tomorrow night, and you retain that title. There are other titles. Where do you go from here? Well, I'll just take one step at a time, and I just look forward to um, being victorious tomorrow night. And then after that, we can discuss the other um, obstacles. How's life, Mike? Uh, it's been almost a year now since you're out. How you how you feeling? Life is um life is not too bad. I'm doing well. Uh, I'm doing you were well. last time you told us there were still concerns you had. You were going through changes. Uh, is that still occurring? This uh, metamorphosis of Mike Tyson. Well, you know, um, for my ordeal is an ongoing um, process as far as it adapting to my situation. Um, after knowing where my, my previous situation was, and I'm just, um, like I said before, I'm adapting, I'm doing well, and I'm looking forward to um, continuing to live my life as a happy citizen. And you are a citizen of Las Vegas? Um, where is home? I, excuse me? Where is home? Um, Ohio, Southern Ohio. And you still reside there? Yes. Didn't you build a home I'm in Vegas? Didn't you build a home in Vegas? Yes. So are you going to have two residences? You know, I don't know. Maybe I may have four or five. I, <laughs> I like France, too. Aha! Uh -huh. You might live in France. Well, you know, I, it's nothing wrong against owning a home there. No? I like these little nice things, little trinkets. <laughs> How's the baby? She's incredibly beautiful. She's how old now? Um, perhaps a month now. I think yesterday she was a month. What, you what have to see her now. Yeah, I gotta she's, see her. Yeah. She, Man, she's, she's in Maryland, incredible. right? Uh, no, she's out here right now, to be honest with you. And if you know, her mother's drop dead gorgeous, but her, <laughs> her mother next to her looks like a uh, man, a junkyard dog, man. This girl <laughs> is just incredibly beautiful. You got lucky. Oh, yes, I did. Thank God. You like oh, praise be to God. You like fatherhood, do you not? Uh, yes. 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 Are, are you going to get married? Yes, definitely. When? Definitely. Very soon. Very soon. Because she's a terrific lady, this lady. Yes, she is. And yes, don't, she is. you know, you don't want to lose something like this. Well, I don't want to lose anything like that. And when I go to the mosque, you know, my, my imam look at me like I'm crazy, you know, having a child and I'm not married. You know, I, I got to get on top of that real quick. 
So would you say it'll happen uh, early spring, pretty soon? Yeah, yes, I would say something to that effect. That's nice. That's nice for the daughter and nice for you. And, and the, your wife will, will leave Maryland and come to live in Ohio? Well, I would like her to come with me, but she has obligations elsewhere. But wherever, she, wherever I am, she'll be there. We'll be together regardless. What will the fight be like? Uh, so Mike Tyson is getting married. That's news. What will the fight be like tomorrow night? Tell us, if, uh, be a reporter. What kind of fight should this be? A fight where Mike Tyson looks spectacular and win in spectacular fashion. What are the elements you like in Bruno? What should we look for in Frank? Frank, I don't know. You should just... Um, oh, come on, Mike, a be a reporter. Bruno. I'm not a reporter. That's your job. <laughs> That's like me asking you to be a fighter. <laughs> Any time, baby. No, I, uh, yeah, I bet you yeah. don't get to be you don't get to be champion for nothing. You don't get to be the kind of hero he is in Great Britain for nothing. He's got a lot of qualities. Uh, what kind of fighter is he? I well, he's a good fighter. He'll be a beaten fighter tomorrow night. Is he a knockout fighter? Is he a fighter whose punch you have to worry about? Well, he's capable of knocking people out. And he, he weighs. With his best, well, he hit me with his best punch seven years ago. I didn't go anywhere. He weighs a lot more than he did seven years ago. I think 20 pounds more than he did seven years ago. Well, big guys don't mean anything to me. I handle them relatively easy as well. And this conversation between you and him, he's going to knock you into Don King's lap. You're going to beat him. This is all hype, right? You don't dislike well, him, Bruno. No, I don't have no um, ill feelings towards the man, but what he says is just basically his opinion, what he can do. I doubt it very seriously if he's capable of doing that. Does it make you angrier? Nah, that's not my nature. I don't get angry. You just, you just get even. <laughs> I just do what I do best. Uh, when? It's, it's sold out tomorrow night. Surprised? Um, no. I'm not surprised at all. This fight has suddenly really caught on. It's a heavyweight championship fight, and it's on Showtime on pay-per-view. Stay with us, Mike. We'll be joined by Don King in a moment. Mike Tyson tries to regain the heavyweight championship tomorrow night in Las Vegas. The promoter of that fight, Don King, will join Mike and yours truly, Larry King, and then we'll take your phone calls. Don't go away. He cannot beat me that night. He cannot. I refuse to be beaten. I refuse to be hurt. I refuse to let a man what has just come out of prison for three years, been out of the ring for four years, had two fights, which, no disrespect to him, you know what I mean? Me being 16 years fighting for what I've been want to fight for, I'm making my stand. There's no way he's going to beat me. No way. No way. We're back with former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson, who takes on the current heavyweight WBC champion, Frank Bruno of Great Britain, tomorrow night in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand. Showtime's pay-per-view will show it as well. It's a sellout in Vegas. Joining Mike is Don King, the famed boxing promoter. I asked Mike this. Don, are you surprised that this fight has sold out? No, I'm not. I think that Mike Tyson sells out all of his fights, and from here on in, he'll be fighting guys of the quality uh, that the public wants to see, and they're demanding one undisputed heavyweight champion. And he's undertook the task to do that. He's dropped the gauntlet, and this is the first in a long journey of capturing all the crowns so the people will no longer be frustrated as to who the real heavyweight champion is. So even though he's a 10 to 1 favorite and a lot of people assuming it's going to be a win, they still will pay up to $1,000 to go see it or $30 on pay-per-view. It's exciting, Larry, and what they do is they want to see quality, the essence of vintage quality that no one can perform better than Mike Tyson. It's not the longevity, it is the quality of the performance. And now he has credible opponents, and they want to see whether Mike Tyson is still rusty uh, from being absent from the ring for four years. And do Bruno have a distinct advantage? Will he be able to capture uh, Mike Tyson at this moment that uh, he thinks that is easy for him to do? All of these questions will be answered tomorrow night. And is Mike Tyson coming out saying, I'm going to reunify the crown. I'm going to be the baddest man on planet Earth. And we'll get an opportunity to see what will happen. I think that you will see a new Mike Tyson that's vintage Mike Tyson that's much better than he was prior to his leaving of the ring. Uh, Mike, uh, he says a new Mike Tyson. Do you, buy, do you agree with that? I'm looking pretty good these days. I can, I can buy what he's saying today. Uh, meaning you, you've had to come more into form since being released, right? This doesn't happen yes. overnight. 
No, not at all. But um, like I said, I've been looking pretty good in the gym, and I'm looking forward to encountering with Frank Bruno tomorrow night. I'm just excited. You know, with Don's talking, Don's talking hype. I'm ready to really get it I'm on. I'm talking reality, too. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah, Larry, let me tell you something. Wait a minute. more focus. He's more disciplined. He is awesome, Larry. I mean, you've you, you got to see that this is an affordable pleasure, an affordable price, and a pleasure you can't afford to miss. Mike, you, mean, weighed, you, you, weighed, you weighed 220, is, and that's only two pounds more than you weighed seven years ago. It says you must be in very good shape. I've weighed the same... I weigh the same now that I did ever since I started boxing, my professional career. I always stayed in great shape, and I took great care of my body, and I'm in, you know, I'm in great health, and I'm a health fanatic, and I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm looking for it. I'm in this for the long haul. I want it all. Uh, so the, the rustiness that you showed in a couple of those fights, that's gone. Well, they believe that it was rust. You know what I mean? Anyone, there's no one I don't believe that can be absent at the amount of time that I was and do as well as I did. And if you think so, not only being absent, I tell her being absent in the kind of um, degrading situation that I was in and come out and do as well. Some of them come out without their faculties. Yeah, good point. Do you uh, anticipate a long fight? Uh, when you go into a fight like this, do you say to yourself, I will allow for 12 rounds? You know, I mean, whatever happens, but you know, I'm not looking forward to a 12 round. Uh, you're looking forward to, do you, I know you don't forecast rounds. Will it be early? Well, I mean, are you, you always I mean? looking for as quick as you can? Well, I'm always looking to, to yes, get it over with. You know, there's twin rounds, 12 rounds, 20 rounds, regardless of the situations. I'm just always ready to go. I'm ready. I'm on fire, and I can't wait till the bell rings tomorrow. We will take a break and come back with Don King and Mike Tyson. Later, Tracy Ullman. Tomorrow night, a tribute to George Burns. And what a week coming next week. More about that later. We'll be right back as we, uh, as we show you the ring in uh, the MGM Grand Hotel. Last time we were in that ring was with Mike Tyson for a live Larry King edition. There's where the fight will be held tomorrow night, about 27 hours from now. Don't go away. We're back with the former heavyweight champion, youngest heavyweight champion in history, Mike Tyson, battling to get that crown back tomorrow night in Las Vegas against... Uh, the Britisher Frank Bruno, and uh, boxing promoter uh, Don King, who's promoting this fight, and we could easily say the best-known promoter in boxing. How do you feel about Mike uh, marrying Monica, Don? Does that make you feel good? It makes me feel good to see Mike do anything, you know, in a positive nature, and this is a positive nature. You have a very beautiful young lady, but, you know, it's something that really makes me feel good, Larry, is that this, we've been on a mission, Team Tyson, that's John, Rory, and myself, you know, along with Mike, when Mike was absent from the ring, we were planning for this weekend that's coming up this day. This is a crowning achievement for us to be able to deliver this man to uh, mm -hmm. uh, an opportunity to fight for the World's Heavyweight Championship again in less than a year outside of his incarceration. This is it. And so we were on a mission. We have worked very, very hard. Some, some people are, sometimes people this around, sometimes, Don, people around someone get nervous when they hear he's getting married because they worry that someone's going to have an influence on him other than them. You don't worry about that, Don. Not at all. You know, what many people underestimate is the brilliance of Mike Tyson. Many people underestimate the man's ability to think, to create, to initiate, and then to direct. And he is Team Tyson, and we work for Mike. And I welcome uh, anyone that would make him comfortable and give his life a little bit more meaning. He has a beautiful daughter, as you told you, Raina. I know. And, uh, and so he's very happy, and this is what makes a happy camper is what we really want, and this is he's that. So it's really great. I love Monica. So all the people around... It really doesn't matter what anyone thinks about it, because I'm the one marrying her. <laughs> You're right. damn right. <laughs> but, but the people around you might get along with Monica, right? In other words, this is harmonious. Oh, this is great, but even if it wasn't any problem, that's my situation. I handle my business at home. Let's take some should, calls for even Mike. Even if they didn't get along, they have no, be, they have no reason being involved with it anyway. Uh, well said. We, uh, we'll go to calls for Mike Tyson and Don King, Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Hello. Mike, if you were able to get past uh, Frank Bruno tomorrow night, who would you like to fight next? Good question. Uh, um, whoever they put in front of me. No one in particular? Whoever they put in front of me. We get there. We line them up. 
uh, Larry, and Mike knocks them down. So it's been the strategy of Team Tyson. We go to the drawing boards to find out what we can present to him, and we select the best out of the group, and then he knocks them down, Joe. So All right, who comes, a, a to, who comes to mind after, let's say, beats Bruno tomorrow? Who would be high on your list for a big pay night? Well, the, you know, the public is demanding an undisputed heavyweight champion. So, naturally, we don't know what it is. We're looking to tomorrow night, and after tomorrow night, we can make some type of a announcement as to what direction we would go. But the one thing is for certain, we are going to take uh, the frustration and exasperation and the gnashing of teeth from the public's mind and have one champion, as a, let's say Jack Dempsey or, uh, or Joe Lewis, or uh, Muhammad Ali, or uh, Joe Frazier, not where you got three champions of the world and everyone is claiming to be the champion of the world Mike? when really mm. the people are frustrated. Mike, yeah. would you worry about fighting George Foreman based on his age? I mean, worry about hurting him? Um, I, you know, me and Mr. Foreman, we have different agendas, uh, basically. He has his agenda, I have mine. And I, I don't know, maybe one day down the line, our agenda is to meet at one, but as of now, it's nothing like that in the making. What's your goal, Mike, when, it, when you make this much money that it can't be dollars? And your goal tomorrow night isn't to, what are you going to do with a, another million? What is your goal? I don't, you know what I mean? I don't basically get into involved with money, you know what I mean? There's never really enough money because there's so many people you can help with money. So the much I get, the, the better it is because I can help so many other people or organizations that's in need of help. So the money is a good asset now that I think about it, you know, because so many people could be helped. But, you know what I mean? This is just what I do, you know what I mean? That's just like if you were to take someone like yourself and you take you out of the radio business and the television business, you know, what would you do at home? You know what I mean? What would you really do? Something that I you love nuts. to do, Pat? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love doing this. <laughs> Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Hello. Hello. I wish you a, a good fight tomorrow night. And I wanted to know about in the late 1980s, uh, you and Don King came up to Edmonton, Alberta, and we're going to have a fight I here. had a great time. Like had a great time there. Would you consider having another fight in Edmonton? No, it's so ironic. Last night I was, we were speaking with Wayne Newton. We were over his house and we were talking. I was asking, I told him I was in um, Edmonton and I was asking him which Indian tribe was up there. And it was so ironic now that you're from Edmonton and you were, you're calling on the phone. And now we were speaking that we loved Edmonton. If that's possible, yeah, I'd love to go back to Edmonton. Don, would you have him great. fight there? Yes, you know what? That was one of the first million-dollar day, you know? They had a beach in the mall. Yeah, right? they, they had a beach in the mall, and there was the first million-dollar ticket sale in one day uh, at, at the Edmonton Arena. I think it was just fabulous, and we, we made a promise then that we'd like to come back to Edmonton, and most certainly we'd like to fulfill that promise. Promise made, promises made, promises kept. That's an incredible place, that mall. Incredible, isn't it? It is, and oh. it's a great mall. We'll be right back with some more moments with Don King and Mike Tyson, and then we shall meet Tracy Ullman and get her rundown of the fight. Don't go away. We're back with uh, Mike Tyson and Don King. The fight is tomorrow night. It's, uh, you can order it on pay-per-view through Showtime. It is sold out. In, uh, you had to add an extra room, Don, didn't you? Yes, we had to add 4,000 more seats, and now we done sold the 4,000 seats out. I think it may have been two or 300 tickets left, I don't know, at the last hearing, but they're going so fast, I, at this time, I don't know. But if you may call, you may get a ticket, you know. And I was just thinking while you were off, Larry, about Monica and, and, uh, and uh, Mike, but I got to tell you, man, I got a beautiful wife at home called Henrietta King, and, you know, she's been with me so long, you know, it's longer than Mike's been old, so... <laughs> I got to take care of my wife. I can't be worried about what's happening with Mike's wife, you know what I mean? So he to deal with his, what, I got to deal with mine. What, you don't care what Mike <laughs> thinks of Henrietta either, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a whole whole of Henrietta. I, you know, Mike got to do his thing. I've been doing mine long. The first time I old. think you've ever heard mention you. Larry, Larry. <laughs> yes, Mike. Larry, why you, got, why you had this man defending his wife all of a sudden on television? Because I didn't defend my woman right here. He hasn't defended his wife. Now he has to defend his well, wife I on television. Well, it ain't a defense. Yeah. It's just a presentation, Mike. You got Monica, and you done Some, made it categorically clear that we ain't got nothing to do with Monica and you. You ain't got nothing to do with me and Henrietta. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time we heard about Henrietta. Uh, Mike, uh, someone has called, uh, some few people have called just to find out your current relationship with the Nation of Islam. Are you committed to it? Um, I'm, no, not at all. I'm, I'm not a member of the Nation of, of Islam, no. Are you planning on being a member? I'm a Muslim. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Sunni Muslim. I'm a Muslim, and I'm not involved with the Nation of Islam as far as involved with their organization. Where, Massachusetts? Well, Hello. Larry, great yeah, show. Thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Tyson. Hello? Yes. yes. Yeah, go ahead. Mr. Tyson, how are you? Go I'm ahead. Fine, What's sir. the question? Yes, I was just wondering, uh, being a convicted rapist and a convicted felon, is it difficult to try to adjust into a normal life? You know, um, I'm just living my life. It comes a time in your life where everything that happens in the past has to just stay there, and I have to continue to just go forward with my life and try to um, escalate and make things um, more profitable and more uh, exciting for my children and for my life ahead. The older child is how old now? Five. What is she like? She's incredible. She's incredible. Um, I, we, like we've spoken this before, I, um, she's a special child. She's very special. Monica very will special. be a good stepmother to her? Loves her to death. All right. You can't help but love her. She's special. She's very special. When are we going to get to see all these people? Why don't you come on one day with your kids and Monica and everything? Hey, that's, it's not meant for everybody to see my kids. You know what I mean? They're, they're meant for me and me only. <laughs> <laughs> and we love you, Larry, because we think you're the best that ever was. You're so disarming. You're so disarming with all your guests, and you ask questions better. No question is offensive when you ask it. And, uh, and you know just how to do it so smoothly, such adroitness. It's, it's just fantastic. What and do I you think of that, huh, Don? Yeah, it's amazing. Don, the best of luck, and Mike is always the best of luck. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, thank you, Larry, and I love you, America. God bless America. Mike Tyson, the former heavyweight champion, he uh, fights to regain that title tomorrow night from Frank Bruno in Las Vegas. You can order it on pay-per-view. It is a sellout in Nevada, and Mike announces tonight that he'll marry Monica Turner, who's, uh, who gave birth to their little baby on Valentine's Day, and that'll take place shortly, and it's very nice to hear that, and... Don King, of course, has been married a long time to Henrietta. When we come back, Tracy Ullman, who has many roles in life, including a new role she just took on today, Dutch Ullman, boxing promoter. We'll get her thoughts on this as well. Don't go away. Tyson in line for accessories, namely a championship belt. On the eve of the Bruno fight, up close with the former champion, whose goal it is to be again the undisputed champ. The latest from Vegas when we come back. Well, about this time tomorrow night, Mike Tyson tries to regain one of the crowns he lost six years ago. Tyson will step into the ring with Frank Bruno for Bruno's WBC heavyweight belt. Nick Charles joins us now from Las Vegas. Nick, the fighters are finished talking. We take over now. And really, plenty of questions coming in, really, about both fighters. Well, Mike, last night on the show, just before the weigh-in, we were talking about Frank Bruno's perceived or real thoughts that he didn't get enough respect. Well, here's a case in point that he may have a point. They were discussing after the weigh-in gloves and what would happen, and normally the procedure is for the champion to be able to pick what brand of gloves both fighters have to wear. Bruno picked the Mexican brand, Reyes. Well, there was no clause specifically written in the contract, which left it up to the promoter, Don King, who promotes both Tyson and Bruno to pick which gloves. Tyson wanted Everlast, Frank Bruno wanted Reyes. They're using Everlast. Frank Bruno may have a point, but back to Mike Tyson. He hasn't had a championship belt around his waist in six years. He's been out of jail less than a year. Fought twice, won both times. He's a prohibitive favorite to beat uh, Frank Bruno tomorrow night. Yet, an element of mystery continues to hover in the air when the subject turns to Mike Tyson's fighting abilities now. Mike Tyson is now 29 years old. He was the youngest heavyweight champion in history. He was thought to be unbeatable. Yet Tyson admits today that even before his cloak of invincibility was torn to shreds by Buster Douglas six years ago, he was on the decline. In the late 80s, early 90s, I, was, I went through too much. I went through divorce, I went through um, public humiliation, and a great deal of, um, or, uh, oh, I don't even talk, talk about it, it's crazy, but it's just that, um, and I've been through a great deal back then, and I, I, just, I was just burnt out, more or less. And I was just beating guys just by existing. But this is 1996, with a three-year gap in his resume caused by a prison stretch and wins over a virtual punching bag, Peter McNeely, and the undistinguished Buster Mathis Jr. Those ten minutes in the ring may have raised more questions than answers. He hadn't proven that he's better than he was, um, but it don't mean that he don't have it in him. And the chances is, is that he had to fight a good fight or two to prove that point. But Teddy Atlas, who trains former heavyweight champion Michael Moore and who worked with Tyson as an amateur, sees an undisciplined, unfocused fighter. Tyson has to bring back the memories of five years ago when he used to be so elusive. And he'd make guys miss. 
towards the chest. And he'd slip punches and create openings. And he would take away the guy's reach advantage by slipping the punch and moving inside. We haven't seen that. Tyson begs to differ. I um, made my reputation off of um, um, devastation in quick fashion, basically. I mean, they've been saying that basically for my whole career. Is Tyson then unwilling or unable to change? And is it necessary that he does? In the Mathis fight, though, he missed much more than he landed. I was just throwing the punches to put his head in the position to hit him. But, you know, I was trying to hit him with those punches, you know what I mean? The fact I wasn't missing, I never was trying to miss on purpose, just that he was moving, he's pretty fast. He had a fast head movement. It was very difficult for me to, um, to figure him out at the beginning. Tyson definitely in the Mathis fight showed when he was missing so much, he was only throwing one punch, make me miss. He was throwing one punch and he was missing, slipped the right hand, he was, and he was missing punches as he was throwing. Now, the old Tyson would have come back as he missed, he would have came back with the second and the third to compensate for the one that missed. But even Atlas, who could be accused of having an axe to grind as a former associate, admits Tyson's talents are still formidable. He still has fast hands. He still punches well. Punches are born, not made. But what remains is the overriding question. Can Mike Tyson be the devastating force he used to be? You feel you could be uh, better than you were then? I mean, that's, um, I'm not gonna lie to anyone. That's a hard act to follow, but you know, I'm pretty, I'm just, I'm just believe I'm good enough to beat everyone. Well, I was with Mike Tyson a couple of hours ago here at the MGM Grand, and I have never seen him more relaxed and calm before a fight. Whether that's good or bad is debatable. The Hurricane Peter McNeely talked the talk. The walk lasted 89 seconds and cost 50 bucks. As Frank Bruno gears up for his rematch with Mike Tyson, he too is talking, saying late Tyson trainer Customato must be, quote, turning in his grave when he sees what's going on with Tyson. Less inflammatory and more entertaining is Bruno's Don King impression. Charlie Steiner is in Vegas to see if Bruno's walk can match his talk. Incredibly, it's been more than six years since Mike Tyson last fought for a title of any kind. It's been seven years since he last fought Frank Bruno. In that fight, a feverish early pace. Is it going to be any different come Saturday night? We ask Frank Bruno. I can't really tell you how he's going to, a quick pace, fast pace, slow pace. All I'm going to tell you, I'm going to win, and I'm going to knock him out right into Don King's. Hey, lad, only in America. <laughs> you know what I mean? Quite simple. With Al Bernstein, now, how do you interpret Frank Bruno's answer? Just before we got that answer out of him, there was a, a burst of honesty for just a millisecond, in which I got the feeling he was confirming that, yes, he was going to go after Mike Tyson right away. He was going to make this as quick a pace as he possibly could earlier. And wouldn't you do that if, you, if your scouting report was the McNeely and Mathis fights, where people took it to Mike Tyson, were not successful because of their skill level, you almost have to fight that fight. Why is the outcome of this fight going to be any different than it was when they first met seven years ago? Well, in truth, I don't think it's going to be different. I believe that Frank Bruno has a puncher's chance. I'll say one thing about Mike Tyson. He is like most great athletes. He rises to the occasion. I expect him to do that against Frank Bruno, even though I think Bruno will give him some trouble early. I do think Mike Tyson is going to end this fight around the same time he ended the first one. Which was five rounds, and we will be here Saturday night, right after the fight, for Al Bernstein, Charlie Steiner, ESPN, at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Gentlemen, thank you. Bruno might be well advised to take his shots early. He has a history of running out of gas, including late losses to Bone Crusher Smith and Tim Witherspoon. He was holding on for dear life and title in his title win over Oliver McCall. As Sports Center continues, we welcome you to the MGM Grand here in Las Vegas, where for the first time in more than six years, Mike Tyson will be fighting for a heavyweight championship tonight in about four hours. It will be Frank Bruno's WBC heavyweight championship. I'm Charlie Steiner along with Al Bernstein. The odds on this fight open at 10 to 1, Tyson the favorite. As fight time approaches, the odds are down to 5 to 1. Al, of course, is famous for his keys to victory. What are they tonight, especially for Frank Bruno? Well, for Bruno, I think it's very, very important that he go to Mike Tyson immediately. He watched the tapes of the McNeely-Mathis fight, and you know that in this version of Mike Tyson, you can do that. And he must jab his way in. Watch for that, because if he comes in without jabbing, he won't be able to land as effectively. For Mike Tyson, the trick is to not let Bruno upset his rhythm early, and in fact, to get through those early rounds, and then be in a position to hurt him in about the fourth or fifth round. Time now for the fearless prediction now. 
Well, I think great athletes rise to major occasions. I think Mike Tyson is a great athlete. He will rise to the occasion tonight, and I think he'll win this fight probably in about the fifth round by TKO. But watch out for those early rounds. They could be wild. Alan, I will see you after the fight. I'm going to go upstairs and get into my tuxedo. Back to you, Larry.